So yeah, you might have gotten yourself a new Roku from the Prime Day sale or just been using one for ages now. Either way, there's a lot of hidden tips and tricks that most people just don't know about. That's what we're here for. And no, we're not talking about private listening or customizing your Roku interface. We're talking about stuff like installing your web browser on your Roku or checking your Wi-Fi signal strength or even mirroring your smartphone and much more. We tested most of these on the Roku stick, but most of these will work on Roku Box and the Roku TV as well. So let's get to them, shall we? Let's start with Roku Remote secret codes. The Roku Remote is a simple piece of gadget, but it comes with some hidden key combinations that are actually quite useful. For instance, there's no power button on Roku, but you can still restart your Roku by pressing the home button five times, and then up, and then rewind two times, and then fast forward two times. And then there you go. Similarly, you can't take a screenshot on Roku natively, but you can do this with a shortcut. Simply access developer options by pressing home button three times, and then up two times, and then right, and then left, and then right, left, and then right again. Using developer options, you can access Roku on your computer and take screenshots, while your Roku acts as a server. There's plenty more key combinations that I'll include in the description box of this video, so check them out as well. Next up, we've got the web browser. Now, there's no native web browser for Roku like we have for Android TV or Fire TV stick. However, you can sideload them. There's a total of two apps on the Roku store, Web Browser X and then Pop Prism Web Browser, out of which only Web Browser renders a website properly and comes around $4.99 a month. Pop Prism didn't work for us when it comes to page rendering. Also, needless to say, these web browsers can't play video, which I hope gets fixed in the future. The default screensaver on the Roku is the one set by the theme which you might want to change. You can change the default screensaver by going to Settings, Screensaver and Browse for Relevant Screensaver Channels. My favourite is the Matrix Square which is a matrix style effect and the Relax Tube screensaver which displays relaxing nature images. Speaking of playing video on Roku from the internet, well, you can cast your smartphone screen onto your Roku. That's right, you heard it right. You can cast your smartphone on a bigger screen using your Roku. It's rather simple and straightforward. All you have to do is enable screen mirroring on your Roku. Now go to settings and then wireless display option on your phone, which is essentially mirror cast. Select Roku and tap mirror once, and then you'll be able to mirror your smartphone on your Roku. You can also cast Chrome browser from your computer by downloading the Roku Cast plugin. Roku Remote is a solid, well built remote like any other ones, but you can lose it sometimes, right? So if you've lost your Roku remote, or if you're too lazy to pick up a new one, you can just use your Roku mobile app. It works just like any other remote as long as you're connected to the same Wi-Fi as your Roku. You can move around so that go back and even control Roku channels by signing into the app with the same account as your Roku. There's even the Roku channel built in, which gives you access to free ad supported movies and shows. If that's not enough, you can even use the remoteware for Roku to control your Roku from an Android smartwatch. But you want to know what my favorite thing is? It's using Siri shortcuts to navigate hands-free on your Roku. Check this out. Hey Siri, launch Netflix. Similarly, you can navigate, play, pause, all using Siri shortcuts. I'll make a separate video on this, so subscribe to this channel for future updates.
Adding a credit card is essential with Roku if you want to buy paid channels like web browser apps. But there is a way which you can skip adding credit card if you're only willing to watch free channels or use normal apps like Netflix or Prime Video. While signing up, choose skip I'll add later on the payment information and then you're good to go. If you're already using Roku, just perform factory reset and then create another account without adding your credit card details this time. If you're unsure that you're getting weak Wi-Fi signal on your Roku or if just your internet is slow, you can check your Wi-Fi signal strength by heading over to settings and then choose check connection. Now Roku will check your Wi-Fi signal strength and then it will display it. Alternatively, you can also press home button five times and then up, down, up, down, up as well. You can play local files on the same network using Plex. Just download Plex channel from the channel store. And as soon as you open it, you'll see sign in button. Sign in and then connect to your Roku via the link on your TV screen. Once you've done that, add the existing folders to the Plex server. It should show up on the Plex channel inside Roku as well. Navigate to the video or audio that you want to play and then tap on play. It should start playing in a couple of seconds. So yeah, those were some of the best ways you can make the most out of your Roku streaming stack. Let me know which one's your favorite in the comment section below. Oh, by the way, check out SmartDNS Proxy if you're keen to unblock geo-restricted content on sites like Netflix, Hulu, Pandora, Amazon Prime Video, there's a bunch of those you can unlock all at once, which is pretty gay for about five bucks a month, which is bugger all, yeah? And Vamsi, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Vamanos, amigos.